thing for me was taking my pants off for the director the first day I got on set. Uh, and I had no fight scenes, you know, and mine was all talking and showing me my party, showing up at a party. Uh, but it was fun, you know, just, just the first day I got on set, I, I saw Jamie and Lily greeted me with warmth, and I felt the love right there on the spot. Um, I felt like, you know, it was a, it was, it was a good family here, and, and um, I just felt welcome. And, the, the, the most exciting stuff for me was, you know, get to perform in my underwear, I guess. That's, that's the only uh, exciting part for my part in the first film. Um, but I have heard from them, all three and all the actors, they, they've been, you know, through hell. After filming, they gotta go train, and after training, they gotta go back on set. So I just felt like, you know, they worked so hard for this film, and they want to do all the stunts themselves. Which, uh, which I thought was very cool, and the director wanted everything to look real. So, and uh, I can't wait to participate in more fight scenes in, uh, in the upcoming films. You know? So, uh, yeah, that was the most exciting, exciting part for me. It was a fight party. <laughs> yeah, for me, the training. I I, I like to work out, but. It, when you're, you work for, we work for 12 or 13 hours, and it's sort of part of the deal also that you have to train also, so um, sort of finding the balance of shooting a, a movie, but also shooting an action movie, so it's not really one or the other, but you have to train as if it's, you know, the action stuff had to be really good action stuff, and, and we wanted that to translate, so um, yeah, I think just you know, three months in, your instinct is to just work and sleep and eat and, you know, those last two things you're not really allowed to do. Um, so that was probably the hardest thing, uh, was balancing the acting stuff with the, with the fighting and the training and the eating properly stuff, which I'm not great at. Not the eating bit, yeah. <laughs> Um, the scene with uh, John Therese Myers, who plays Valentine and James, was probably the hardest, um, or the one that I was most anxious about because, without spoiling anything, that's when kind of the, the big surprise happens. Um, and it's, it, as a fan myself, reading the books, that's like the ultimate moment of fear and disappointment, and you know, if, if all your emotions kind of culminate in this one moment. And um, I, as actor, wanted to make every viewer feel the way I felt as the reader. So for me, that was the most emotional. Um, you know, obviously there's like the greenhouse, and then there's this scene. So it's like the romantic emotion, and then the fear emotion. And it was making sure that all the emotions were read differently, and never one line, you know, like, um, boring. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure she wasn't boring. Um, but yeah, that, it, having that emotion come out in a very genuine way was, was difficult um, to kind of... Yeah, having cast there was incredibly instrumental. Like, it was, it was necessary to have her there. I mean, you know, without going into too much detail, um, towards the end of the movie, the movie as it stands now had a different ending. Um, and myself and Lily felt particularly strongly about this um, and we were fortunate enough to be able to go to Cassie who agreed with us and then on mass storm into the producer's office and and you know explain with the utmost sincerity that we didn't believe that this is how it should finish um, and having her there as a voice it was you know necessary um, because a lot of times if you go into an office as two actors you're sort of laughed out of the office really um, so having her there as, as, as uh, you know, a voice of authority was necessary. Um, and I think, I think we can all agree on one thing that the movie, I think, it stands for, and what, you know, what, what the book says as well, you know, is that it's okay to be different. It's okay to feel different in a world that you don't quite understand. I know I, when I was growing up, and still to this day, feel, you know, sometimes that I'm not right 
you know, here, this world I'm not like, I just like, I feel odd, I feel out of place. Um, and, uh, and I think that that's what Clary goes through, she's thrown into a new world and I think that, you know, it, it, whether or not it's fantasy, I think we can all relate to that. Do you have any advice for young people? Stay weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> which either will be met or won't be met. And recently I've been way more into spontaneity and just kind of living and seeing what happens because ultimately no one has any control over any of that. Um, what I can control is who I surround myself with from the day-to-day -day basis, and that's my friends and family and friends that I've made my family. And the people that know, love, and respect me for me and will call me out if anything ever gets weird or I'll always feel safe and protected no matter what. So. It's a blessing to have fans that support you and support the movie and the character and, um, you know, that's a great thing. But, again, you can't set any expectation on if things get crazy because ultimately that's coming from a place of passion. And you don't want to, I don't know, it, preparing for that kind of stuff seems so bizarre to think that you have to prepare for craziness like that. So I guess just, I don't know, just being ourselves and just not really dealing with it until it happens, if it ever happens. You can't really prepare for anything. You, know, you just sort of deal with it and you don't deal with it. Some people deal with it better than others. Um, success or failure. So, um, you know, part of what I think we have, fortunately, is that we're all so close that I feel like whatever it is that happens, I feel like we have a good we have the ability to talk to each other about it, and I think part of what some people deal with when when they become either really famous or whether they deal with failure or success is that they sort of feel isolated by it. And, um, we won't have that either way. So, um, you know, I think having traveled together the past month, I think that there's a great ability to sort of look at each other and go, wow, that was crazy. Or, um, isn't it weird to see your face on a billboard? Um, we don't have to sort of digest that on our own. Um, and, you know, as we continue on, we're going to do this other film. I think we deal with it together, and I think that we all have good family and good sort of support system to sort of keep things in perspective. Because it's all, but again, you can't also undermine it because the people who are crazy are the people who are going to buy the tickets. So, and without them, we don't have a job. We're just sort of, you know, doing community theater. So, um, not there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so, you know, it's a it's a balance. But I think we all sort of have a good idea of, of you know, we're all pretty rational people in terms of how to deal with it. Good. Muy bien. Tenemos otra pregunta. Sí. Um, ¿Qué significa para ti que nos platicaron un poquito de sus personajes, de la preparación de, de, de cada uno por el proceso y este, como que la, la, qué los define en cada uno de sus personajes. Bueno, es muy difícil actually preparar un character de un novel, de un libro and to bring it out into, you know, real life and on the big screen. So you kind of just have, especially my character, Magnus, is, is uh, there's not really a character that you can follow to get an example of what this character might be like. So um, it was kind of hard and difficult for me. And I was under a lot of pressure because Magnus was, I think, favorite character. 
So I had to, um, you know, I had to, I had to talk to Cassie, the author, I had to talk to Harold. Um, they gave me a great pointers and, uh, and, and ways of portraying this character. And, and that's how um, I became more confident in, in the role. And, and I just thought it was very interesting, you know, just from the character itself. It's just a flamboyant, like, party animal and who just doesn't care what he wears. And, you know, obviously has um, beautiful makeup and glitter on and, and he dresses well. And, and that, I think, when the costume and the makeup and all things put together, you can just feel the power of this character around the spot, and especially being on set with all the vampires and werewolves and the shadow hunters all together. You just kind of get that feeling uh, right away when you're on the set. So it, it just have to, it's just kind of have to go with it and uh, just do your do your homework and remember your lines, and, and that's what I did. Uh, yeah, I just sort of this question already being ready for, you know, I just didn't want to make him too simple. I think people, especially with younger audiences, sort of underestimate their ability to understand complicated characters. And, um, so I didn't feel the need to sort of explain who he was in the first film. You can sort of let the audience figure out whether they like him or don't. Um, whether they like you as an actor or not, and I think that part of that is uh, what we have to do. Bring whatever it is that's going on with yourself into, into the character that you play. Um, so that's it. I mean, it's just the same as any other film. You just sort of find yourself in the character as much as you can and, and show up and do it. Uh, yeah, showing up is always a good one. Um, uh, for me, I sort of went through, uh, I went through quite a long process of trying to find out who Jace was. I mean, obviously we have the book, so we have this Bible, effectively, um, of, uh, of, of, of the character basis. Um, but I saw this very much as my opportunity to redefine or reimagine the archetypal male love interest. For a long time, I think you've seen those characters as big, beefy, jock-type guys. Um, and I saw this as my opportunity to turn around and go, oh, I have cousins who are 15, 16, who are girls. What are they like? They're like the damaged rock star, you know? They're like, they're, that's why Mick Jagger and people like that for so long have been, you know, have been so popular. And that's why they stand the test of time. And that's what I was into. So for me, I made a mood board of all these artists that I like. James Hetfield, Jason, very aggressive please. James Hetfield from Metallica. Uh, Kurt Cobain, my friend Ollie, who plays in a band called Bring Your Horizon, uh, stuck pictures up the fan art that people have done of myself and Lily, pictures of me, pictures of Lily, pictures of River Phoenix, of Heath Ledger, Young John Depp, um, all these guys that are beautiful but damaged, and that's what I saw Jason as, no matter the fact, you know, he's, he's half an angel, he's also half a human, and that's what really interested me about him. I play Clary Frey, who um, you know thinks that she's a normal girl from Brooklyn, but actually is a shadow hunter, so she's actually half angel. Um, for me, I had just played Snow White, so she's a character that everyone has an opinion about, and they have for years and years and years. So I kind of got over the idea of playing a literary heroine that everyone would have their own picture of in their own head. Um, so taking on Clary was along the same lines, um, just a little bit less um, stressful. But um, I, I don't know, I always saw Clary as being just the normal girl. I mean, I didn't emotionally prepare for this role like I may have in other movies because I wanted to really be genuine in the fact that I was exper experiencing this craziness with Clary, as any young girl would, as any fan like myself the books would. I wanted to make her someone that wasn't too superhero-esque, because what's interesting about that? Not much. She's not relatable if she doesn't cry, and she's not vulnerable, and she doesn't break down, and isn't confused. Because the whole point is that she's going through a, mid a, a midlife crisis. She's going through a teenage crisis, 
um, that some of us never leave. Um, I'm 24 and I still, like Jamie said, I'm trying to figure out who I am. And the whole thing is it's okay to be confused. It's okay to cry. It's okay to kick ass. It's okay to be all those things in one person. And going on these mall tours and seeing all the young fans reacting to Clary like I do, it just proves that every young girl can be Clary. Um, you know, physically I had to prepare by training, but emotionally it really was about being spontaneous and genuine throughout the day of filming. And I've said this before, but my Clary was only my Clary because Jamie was his Jace. And that stays true for every character that she comes into contact with. It was a very collaborative experience. It was about improv and, and really just being in the moment. So a lot of our characters came alive as we were filming day to day. So no amount of preparation can prepare you for the spontaneity of the job. And luckily Harold was open to that. So I still stay true to the fact that any young girl could be Clary. And for all the fans out there, um, I don't want to define who Clary is for them. I'm just the actress who gets to personify her. But by no means am I Clary. Clary is part of me, but Lily isn't Clary. <laughs> I'll answer, the, I'll answer the second part of that question first. Uh, it was very difficult to stop eating cookies because Kevin Zegers would take planes back and forth from Toronto to Los Angeles um, and or the other way around and would always bring me cookies um, to set um, in order to tempt me and to tease me um, and for general hilarity, so that was nice of him. Um, but it was very difficult to stop these abilities. Yeah, I have a very, a very sweet to um, uh, The first part of your question, what was it? Musicals, musicals, musicals or this. Um, I mean, I felt, I've played music all my life. Music's been part of, you know, part of me growing up. I started playing the piano when I was four and the violin when I was five and then several brass instruments and guitar, drums, whatever. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, so acting for me is something that I find a little bit more challenging, straight up acting. And I still don't feel comfortable doing it, actually, in all honesty. Um, <clears throat> I still don't feel comfortable on set. I still don't feel comfortable reading a script um, and imagining me having to play it. Uh, it's, it's something that I have to go through on a daily basis. But, you know, art and music, is easier. Um, so what challenges me more right now is the straight up acting. Um, and, I, and I love that. I love being challenged. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, what, you know, it's what pushes you to make yourself better.